In a world in crisis, can three idiots find hope in the darkest of places? Will love conquer all, or will hate win out in the end? This is a show called Hate. Welcome to a show called Hate, a podcast in which we explore love, hate, and everything in between in search of greater meaning and perhaps a little perspective. I'm John. I'm Nick. And I'm Chris. Yeah, I'm Chris. Yeah, he's, yeah. Sadly, sadly. I mean, um, it turns out, it turns out last week uh, or, or last episode recording remotely was good. Uh, good training for. Well, um, who knew? Who knew that that would sort of pay dividends in the end. Yes, yes indeed. I mean, we are recording from lockdown. Uh, lockdown two, the yes. the lockening, the sequel. It's, it's it's even more lockier and downier than ever. Yeah, two lock, I, two down. Yeah, two lock, two down. It's important to for future generations listening back. I think it's quite important that we mm. do date these cultural milestones as we approach them. But well, we need to we need to explain the context that we're recording in. Yes, absolutely, because okay. this will Hellscape. form part of form part of the history that you know. I I, I can imagine a, a lone desert nomad is walking across a blasted landscape, and suddenly, uh, what you know, peeking in early twenty twenty one. Yes, exactly, twenty twenty one, and peeking out of a sand dune, you see you see like my house, you know, and you're like, ah, right, okay, this is this is how bad it is, and then he stumbles across you know an old audio archive of a show called Hate. And uh, uses that to find out what life was like, you know, before, yeah, before the the dark days. <laughs> he, uh, he, in walking across this barren desert, he finds a a flash drive, yes. uh, containing uh, most of our back catalogue, poking out of the sands, yeah. and uh, he then starts a fire with it. <laughs> so, so this episode is dedicated to you, you Lone desert wanderer, nomad. <laughs> you yeah. sweet sweet nomad. You really deserve it. I hope you find uh, we, some water we should, soon. <laughs> uh, we should also say that um, if anyone hears uh, the sound of um, distant explosions... Uh, kind that's, of... the, that's the start of it. <laughs> then, yes. <laughs> that's the beginning of the end of the world. Yeah. The beginning... Oh, there we go. Oh, wow. Yeah. That was a big one. Oh, I heard that one too. Maybe we're closer than I... Really... Are you, maybe, are you maybe, it's like we all... <laughs> maybe it's like we all live really close to each other. <laughs> I yeah we might get a weird kind of Doppler effect kind of going on because right now there's like a 21 gun salute it's fireworks by the way listen because it's November um, the 5th well frankly it yeah, could be I'm, any I'm day in it. October at the moment yeah. recently yeah but uh, this is gonna be I fun can't, can't for you to them. edit John I think it's gonna be really fun I think the, the continuity is gonna be terrific for this episode oh there it is yep. there it is those, there it is some, yeah, those are some big it. ones yeah it's almost as though if you tell people they can't go anywhere mm. or do anything, but the sale of colourful explosives isn't regulated, it's almost like everyone's just going to have a massive free-for-all. I do think yeah. it's funny how, um, again, for context, we're entering into a second lockdown due to the coronavirus, which some of you, oh, some yes. of you listening may be aware of. Um, I do think it's funny how a lot of people I've seen on social media have been doing parties to to, uh, to celebrate their last day of being able to be together. <laughs> and this was because the government announced the lockdown on a... Was it a Friday night last week? It was, or Saturday? Uh, yeah. No, Saturday we, night. So, so, we, yeah, we were, we were actually together we, having our last party before lockdown. We were. And, and instead <laughs> of saying, like, it's lockdown as of tomorrow, they said, oh, it's lockdown as of next Thursday. <laughs> And yeah. so everyone just went, right, we've got four days to jam a party in, lads. <laughs> that was that was pretty much it. It's like, right, lads, I'll see you at the pub every day until Thursday. Yeah, let's uh, let's make it count. So I had a few yeah. uh, I had a few colleagues who were saying they were all in the pub last night and they said it was like uh, Christmas Eve or Yeah. This is, I mean, yeah. this is the worst thing that could happen. <laughs> And they were like, there was so much, uh, <laughs> there was so much demand, and the, the the pub couldn't keep up that they had to like share a pint glass yeah. and just kind of pass it round. Yeah. yeah. In fact, by the end, they were just putting their hands outstretched in a cup-like shape, 
Yeah. And they would just, you know, just pour, just pour it straight in. And they, then they were pouring yeah. it down their friends' mouths from their hands. <laughs> it was really, really awesome, actually. You know, yeah. and, when they, and when they occasionally were a bit sloppy... <laughs> I mean, oh no, I miss and you know, I've got I've got I've got precious booze all over my hands and they were like, mm. don't worry, I'll lick it directly yeah, yeah. off I'll your lick skin. That off you. Yeah. That's 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 a standard Christmas party, really, isn't it? Yeah. In Cheltenham. We're in I know I know we have um thousands of international listeners. Like yeah. too many to count. Know, countless, countless. Um uh and not every country on the planet has two fire and explosion based festivals so close to each other so Indeed. obviously here in in good old blighty we have yeah. of course all hallows eve as we call uh, it as we call it uh the queen's uh, ghoul day <laughs> <laughs> um and and then we also have guy fawkes night yes. or bonfire night the queen's terrorism some... night <laughs> yeah why why is it that we celebrate guy fawkes night by doing what he ultimately couldn't here's the thing um i by think burning is that, the house is that of parliament yeah is that why i think it's a propaganda based holiday <laughs> that is basically you're right, that's basically telling us to love the government every year don't don't question authority isn't it great you've got mm. a government isn't the government great here's a firework have a great evening <laughs> Is yeah. for one. <laughs> Here's a firework. Now get out of my sight. Yes, exactly. And don't expect it, any benefits. But it's always like people talk about like, oh, you know, Christmas is getting earlier every year. But like, because what is it like? Halloween is the last day of October, and Guy Fawkes night, day, whatever, is the fifth of November. Yeah. Today. It's today Rem for remember, reference. Remember. Yeah. Um, we are recording on the fifth of November. That's like that's like the better part of a week. So, like, if not a full week. And so the fireworks kind of bleed across the whole week. Indeed. So having like, a, mm. having, like, a week of just constant explosions is pretty much to be expected. Yeah. This, this year in particular, it did seem to start at, like, October oh, the 1st. Yeah. It's just gone. Definitely. I agree. Definitely. The fireworks started a lot earlier this year. And I don't, uh, I don't fully know why, but there we go. Have you ever... I mean, like, I feel anyone at home... Can get in on like the bonfirey halloweeny kind of action by having a firework you know have a have a couple of, have a couple of sparklers maybe a yeah maybe um, one roman candle a roman can which one's a roman candle is that like it's like a tube that fires a lot of colored balls up into the sky <laughs> okay like a nerf gun basically kind of like a yeah like a nerf gun but like without the nerf parts like a gun kind of Oh, oh okay. it's like it's like a handgun firing into the sky. Think of that. Is it like is it like a spray of? Is that is that what it's like a spray? No, of I think like... it's I think it's like a little like a little ball like a with which has like colourful powder in it that burns. And so when it fires, it's like it's not a rocket because it doesn't explode, but it's like just a ball of light that goes up and leaves a trail of sparks. And it does that lots like boop 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 boop. That's a Roman. Candle. Oh, I know, I know the one. Uh, I know the one. Yeah. yeah, right. Yes, there was one of those going off earlier. There you go. I remember seeing it. So my question is, I remember as a kid, my dad doing fireworks in the garden like once. Oh, and really? We had to, and we had to watch only once from the dining room behind, <laughs> like behind the patio door, as like a safety precaution. One oh, would imagine in, uh, in, that, in case it... that suggests that my parents really did not give a shit about my safety then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Because you... <laughs> the way we did it was that me and Phil uh, got to light fireworks ourselves, and uh, nice. we were all outside. And your parents stayed behind the glass. And, yeah, parents were inside behind the shield, <laughs> behind the lead <laughs> defensive shield. No, yeah. we were all outside. We were about a few meters back, and we all took turns to light stuff. My mum didn't get involved, but we did. And of course, like, you couldn't find like a, a glass milk bottle to put the firework in so you had to hold it between your buttocks it was like the only yeah. way yeah because like some people think that's like a hazing thing it's like a dare but the truth was in the angel household it was just the best way to hold a rocket like yeah like people don't understand they don't go off they don't go off as well if they don't go out your ass exactly oh that's a tagline right there actually thinking back i remember um having a kite as a kid mm. that was but, on fire but never <laughs> 
I mean, I was quite young, and I remember like really wanting to fly this kite. You know, I'd seen, I'd seen uh, Mary, Mary Poppins. Poppins. I, I thought sure, this was, sure. you know, something to look forward to. <laughs> and I seem to recall that, like my dad, lighting the fireworks from behind a wall of glass, and I, me enjoying it from afar. I have a memory of my dad flying a kite for me, so I could vicariously <laughs> enjoy it. And I remember thinking. Could could I not fly the kite? And I think, oh no 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 no! <laughs> I think it was like, no, you can't be trusted. You'd let go. You'd lose it. Or you'd so. be tugged into the sky. I, th I, I think that's how I'm gonna be. Like I'll be having so much fun, and my kid will go, oh, "Daddy, can I fly the kite?" <laughs> no, I wouldn't have thought so. <laughs> <laughs> no, I uh, I don't suppose you you can. No, I thought you were gonna say, John, no. that that you were flying a kite, and they drilled a very small hole in the glass of the patio doors. And fed the string through to you in the lounge, so that you could uh, you could fly a kite, but behind the safety, of course, of the patio doors, which are invulnerable, as we all know. I yeah. think I think I think uh, what's ultimately the most important is that they were right, because I think uh, the one time in later childhood that my brother and I did fly a kite with with my grandparents, I remember okay. I was holding the kite and I was like, oh, it's in the air, it's amazing, the kite never gets in the air like it's flying it's great yeah and my my brother going you know oh oh can i can i hold it i'm going like yeah okay there you go he <laughs> away a second later the kite is just <laughs> on fire <laughs> it's just <laughs> head <laughs> it's with god now it's with god you can't... <laughs> that doesn't sound oh, so much no. both of you can't be trusted it sounds purely that your brother can't be trusted <laughs> yeah I think that's the important <laughs> lesson here. I think that's what we've learned. Uh, Robin can't be trusted my, with a kite. My big question was going to be, though, you know, on the subject of have you set off a firework in your back garden? Um, <clears throat> have you ever burned a guy on your own? Because I don't think that's a healthy pastime. No, no, that's always been something I've seen done when I've gone to a big firework show. They always have the bonfire and they always have the guy who, who and it, there's like a schedule, isn't there? It's like firework display at 7.30, guy, <laughs> guy burning at 8. And it's like, wow. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but did they actually burn Guy Fawkes? I don't the think government. they did. I thought they hung Drew uh... and caught him. Oh, well, that's another inaccuracy about this then. I think that they I didn't mean, actually blow up the Houses of Parliament and they didn't burn the perpetrator. So this whole thing is a sham. Well, I mean, for all we know, he didn't even exist. Oh, I, all right then. Well, I think, forget I, all that. <laughs> anyway, let's celebrate Christmas. I think it's meant I think it's meant to be a harsh message to anyone who might get a similar idea down the line. I think it's meant to be okay. A. So a. It's, it's more of a so it's an annual event that's more of a deterrent than anything else. I think it's half deterrent, half like love your government because they love you. Like that's going really well. That that's message. going great. I think. Yeah. I think. I think it's some of the weird shit that you only seem to get in Britain. Where I think honestly, like we, this is like the we, we're, we're ostensibly like um, a Christian country, but there's also like this really dark underbelly of like um, ancient pagan celtic kind of festivals we and love stuff. to burn things mm. that's my point like i kind of feel that like the guy forks thing was kind of like an excuse and yeah. i bet like if you look back in history humans have been burning like a man Effigies. on a fire yeah <laughs> yeah you know since the days when we worshipped an old stone you know, and we we had to burn something at night to make sure the sun rose in the morning. You know, stuff like that. Like <laughs> it's old and primal, and I feel like I have these memories of like walking down to like the village hall for like bonfire night in our little village, and there is something kind of like weird and yeah. dark about it. There We're is like going out arcane almost. Yeah, a cult. It's like Morris dancing. <laughs> Yeah, it's just like Morris dancing. Exa it's exactly like Morris dancing, yeah. yeah. But but yeah, but like Morris dancing, or oh, it's all a bit of a laugh, you know. Bunch of guys in the in the village put on silly costumes, they dance, they sing. I think it's also a there's something vaguely creepy about a Morris dance. Oh, definitely. Was that just me? Well, no, I think it's creepy. Um, well, what happened to you? That's that's my first question. <laughs> Where did Can the Morris bell? dancer touch you? <laughs> but Morris Morris dancing is is certainly an outdated <laughs> concept 
I don't know where we go from here with Morris dancing. I don't know how you modernise it, and I'm not sure it will survive if you can't modernise it. I think you. So that's, uh, some, that's something to think about. As no, the, I, as if you're. No, I know. I know why. Dancing. I know how. I know exactly how to modernise. Oh God, hit dancing. me. So you you just put it into Fortnite. So make it one of the, okay. Make it one of the Fortnite dances. Done. Now I have one question about that. Oh, here we go. What is Fortnite? <laughs> <laughs> I was hoping that would be the question. <laughs> I feel we I know, answer I know this question I know on it, every episode. You probably do. I know it's a video game because um, there was a Star Wars thing on it when the Rise of Skywalker came there out. There was, but that there is genuine. That is genuinely the first time I think I've ever properly investigated the game. It's it's a competitive. But I don't know. I don't know what it is. Competitive a, shooting right. game where lots of kids play online and shoot each other. In a, oh. in a battle royale type scenario where once you're dead, you're dead, and the last one standing wins. Essentially. But no, nobody's won yet, then. Oh, no, there's lots of uh, rounds. The games are played constantly. Oh. 100 people Millions join of people. Yeah, millions of people are playing 10-minute games over and over and over again. Oh. yeah. And when you stop, you play again. Oh. Because that's what you're supposed to do. It's either that or burn an effigy oh. of Guy Fawkes. You've got well, two choices. I'll 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 take the effigy. I think. Yeah. Well, the thing is, if I if I said to you, Rev, you know, like mm. football's been going on for a while. I thought I thought you might bring up football. Yeah. Well, no, I, I'm trying to put it into. No into... one's won it yet. Yeah. Thank you. No Nicholas. one will ever win yes. the football. I think we've talked about that's this on point. the podcast as well. What what happens when someone wins the football? I think that's been discussed. Yeah. You just go. You just go again. <laughs> just go again, mate. Try better next time. Have you ever seen, um, just because my brain is still thinking about like weird old English kind of Bullshit. rituals and stuff. It, yeah. Have you ever heard of Jack in the Green? No. No. I have a, I have a, I have a friend called Jack Green. Okay. That, that probably is connected. Yeah, him. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah you've, you've met. Yeah. Right. Yeah. The end. No. Uh, Jack in the Green is like a weird, slightly creepy, as in this could probably be the basis of a horror movie, a bit Wicker Man sort of oh yeah oh I. it's like there's a few isolated villages in the uk it's not done everywhere where as part of like the summer festival where you're meant to be kind of like it's like oh oh you know winter went away and, and, and now we have to crops and go. we have to burn something because that's like our just go-to reaction to anything <laughs> uh the morris gangsters will be out and there'll also be a character called jack in the green who oh. basically look? It, it, it's a man. It's a man wearing a suit, which is entirely. Oh, that was, that a, was big a big one. one. That, that was a, that that was a, a big, one. big, oh, big, did, big yeah. boy. We oh, all that one. Oh, pardon me, dear. Um, Kaboom! Oh, excuse me again, dear. Oh. And he looks like a walking tree, basically. Is oh, what I'm he's saying. Like, like the green man. Yeah, like he's entirely covered in like reeds or bushes and and whatnot. It's kind of sorry. This, is this a video game? <laughs> no, this is real life. <laughs> I'd play oh. it though. No, Morris I think is part, I, he's part of the festival. I know, yeah. I know him by a different name, which is the Green Man, not Jack in the Green. Ah, but I, I have I've, a feeling I've, that he's all over the country, probably by slightly different. I've never heard of this, but I think but I green... never, I never went to fireworks displays because I don't like fireworks. So there you go. I don't think this is connected to fireworks. Oh, but it's, it's connected to to pagan rituals, weird pagan British things. Yeah, that we do. So like, the fireworks are going off, the Morris dancers are Morris dancing, and then the man dressed as a bush turns up. And then we burn yeah, him. Yeah, and he's kind of, and he kind of like, and yeah. We, and then we roll the cheese down the hill. Yeah, and then we well, throw yeah, a Wellington this is the thing, like, yeah. this, is, this is the thing, I can't, like, you get all those, like, viral videos, which is like, ooh, ten differences between the UK and America, and it'll be like, number one. In the in America, we call them sidewalks, but in the, in Britain, they call them pavements. Isn't yeah. that weird? Ooh. And it'll go like it'll go True like that. on like that, you know. It's like, you know, they say potato, we say potato. No. Isn't that weird? And then like number eight is like, every Saint Swithin's Day, the British burn a pig <laughs> alive inside inside a effigy of a man, you know. <laughs> In order to hearken on the days of the days of autumn, and we all you know. do it, yeah. all every one of us in our garden. That's and why in America that's why we have the running country water. smells like pork so much. So much. <laughs> but I feel like around every corner, there's some weird nonsense just kind of hanging out. Where, every like... third Wednesday, we kick a whole wheel of cheese at the local vicar, and he you know, he thanks us for it. <laughs> oh, he thanks us for it. Yes, <laughs> yeah. It was like when well, I, when that's, I... His, that's his only meal. <laughs> 
eat cheese as per, only. As per the law of the land. He has a wheel of cheese every three weeks, and otherwise he can't have anything. He must be... He can, he, can, he can drink out of the local stream once a fortnight. He must shit clay pots. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. And he sells <laughs> them at a, a reasonable profit. <laughs> Did you know... Did you know? Here we go. Oh, here, here, this is going to be I, good, I reckon. I, I bet Chris Ray will know this. He knows. Oh. He knows stuff. interesting things. Thank you. You know, like, how London... I know stuff as well. Yeah. Well, John, you don't know, be you... so dismissive. No, the thing is, like, if, if this was about, like, a robot <laughs> or something, like, really just epic, I'd be like, oh, Nick, he's my man. Oh, is this, are, you, are you suggesting this is something mundane that I probably know, then? <laughs> I'm just saying you're a man, you're a man of... You know, you're salt of the Mundan- earth. I'm like a man of mundane taste. Salt of the earth. <laughs> I don't, I don't know. Uh, this is John's opportunity to tell everyone that I'm simple, basically. Salty. No, I'm saying you speak for the common man. <laughs> Go on. Okay. <laughs> you, you know, right. You know, you know London, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And you know there's like a city inside a city in London. There's the city of London... And, and then the there's a city called London. Yes. Yeah, sure. And like... Well, there's also the city of Westminster. Yes. There's Is several it? Yes. cities. But like, but... regular London has a mayor. That's uh, sure. Sadiq, Sadiq Khan. Yeah. Yes. And then the city of London also has a mayor. Oh, but really? Like, but like, the city of London is like tiny and is like only this little bubble inside London. Yeah, sure. The city of this is a fun little fact I know. Here we go. The city of London is so old it predates London and it predates this really the United Kingdom. Okay. Mm. And it's so old that we have no records of it being created. And if you were to go into like legal documentation, oh, that was a big one. Oh, if you, oh, oh, they're coming for me. <laughs> if you were to go into like legal documentation about the city of London, after a certain point, it just says it has existed since time immemorial. Oh my god, that it's is... always been there. There's that always been a city of London, even words. since like dinosaur times. In fact, yeah. In fact, back in the day, there were a bunch of like dinosaur businessmen yeah. who were going around. Oh, I know and, about like, trading. I know all about the dinosaur businessmen, John. Don't patronise me. I know all about them. There's, like, there's know, fossils canary, of dinosaurs can... holding suitcases. <laughs> exactly, yeah. And, you know, can- Canary Wharf. That used to be yeah. called Velociraptor Wharf because <laughs> dinosaurs eventually evolved I did, into birds, I did know as, that. as we all know. And hence Canary. Yeah, hence Canary Wharf. It all makes so much Who's sense got... when you lay it all out, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Who, uh... uh... Looks oh, like Chris, Chris, Ray's, Chris Ray's got his hand up there. I haven't gone first for I haven't gone first for a while, and I I demand my my cut. Well, um, let me let me set you up then. All right, okay. Go on. Um, this well, is be, uh, this is going to be who fun. has a hate? Me, me. I have a hate. Me, I do. Me, me I do. Me, I have oh, a hate. Piss off. Me. Piss off, <laughs> wrinkly old shit. It's my turn. <laughs> I mean, well. I mean, I've got a hate. Well, my tell hate, me about it. My hate is Chris Ray now. I'll, um, yeah, well, that's fine. That was coming in a later episode anyway. <laughs> it's inevitable. Yeah. Um, my hate is when movies are not as billed. Okay. okay. So you know when you're, you're sitting around and you're thinking, oh, should we watch a movie? And I you, just, sort, of, you uh... sort of look at a few trailers and you think, oh, that looks okay. Why don't we give that a go? Mm. And it turns out to be nothing like the trailer depicted. And bear... Uh... You, has that never happened to you? I think I think it has. I can't think of an example off the top of my I've head. I've got I've like, got a few examples. The thing I feel is, like I've been disappointed like this before. Yeah, it's not necessarily disappointment. It's that I'm not good with scary films, horrors, okay. if you will. Um, and some of these films that we thought to be one thing have, in fact, been akin at least to a horror. I see. So this isn't a one, but this is this is what got me thinking about this. We watched Enola Holmes on Netflix. Oh yeah, we watched last that. week, which was very good. I enjoyed it very much. But we or we, we sort of thought it was going to be a kiddie movie. Uh, and and at one point, a guy smashes his head and dies on a wooden pine cone. Oh, that's ornament. true. Yes. What? Yeah. yeah. Like, like fairly, not graphically, you don't see his head explode or anything, but it it's, certainly it's makes an almighty visceral, thud. Yeah, it's, it's quite, quite, yeah, you certainly see it, and it certainly is right there. It is Wait, happening sorry, right how, there. 
it, it's a pine cone. It's a model. Yeah, so it's, it's like an ornament. an ornament. It's like a statue made of oak or something. And right. it's, it's got like a pine cone as part of its sort of makeup. It's like an ornament on the ornament, if you like. It's kind of like um like a like a newel post of a mm. banister kind of thing. Yeah, oh, like a big okay. wooden carved pine cone. So he's not he's knocked to the floor and his head like on his temple it lands on that and it just well goes, it, it doesn't just land it slightly pierces him because there's this yeah. horrible sort of thunk sound and it's like yeah. the top maybe inch of the pine cone is definitely in his brain. Yeah, sure. And this was this oh. is what we thought to be a kids movie, <laughs> but it wasn't really a kids movie. No, in general, it was it was, was it? it was. I thought it was very good generally, but yeah, it's there were a few good. sort yeah. of I sort of jump it. scares and things like that that sort of come out of nowhere, and you're like, yeah. oh my but god! Does that make it? Uh, does that make it a, a young adult? I would. Uh, I would ooh, ooh. That, that was a big one. That was a big one. Yeah. We're going to be saying that a lot. I I, um, would say, I would say it was probably targeted at that kind of market. Yes, but I think then, it's a family movie. Yeah, then the the problem with targeting young adults is they're all bloody awful, and they wouldn't yeah. watch a film like that because they're too no, cool. Because they're playing Fortnite. Um, yeah, yeah, whatever yeah, that they, is. If if they're, if they're scoping like mad headshots and their KD ratio is like just really like off the chain, they're not going to be spooked by someone falling on a on a pine. No, cone. I mean they <laughs> see that every day. They see that every evening in town. Every evening they play Fortnite. They use the pine cone rifle, and they see a man die by a pine cone every fucking night. So they don't give a shit. The only that. thing that would shock them is the amount of stately homes in the film. There's a lot of stately homes. Yeah. Lots of stately homes. Also, Henry Cavill's in it, and I love Henry yeah, Cavill. He, I'm just I'm, yeah. I'm, he play, weak. He plays, I'm weak at the knees for Henry Cavill. Yeah. I'm telling you he that. Plays now. He, he plays Sherlock. He plays Sherlock Holmes. I have seen the last 20 minutes of that movie and I was aware that yes, Henry Cavill and his kind of immense dwarf scar gravity <laughs> was sherlock holmes like yeah that man is just 80 percent beef it is astonishing like I love how it. you can be that big yeah. and, and his face. a human being look at his face he's like chiseled out of marble it's incredible yeah you just think it's just... if he held you you just feel so safe yeah oh man I if think. henry cavill held me i oh, that would oh. be incredible wouldn't it i bet he smells phenomenal as well i bet he does oh being in those arms oh boysy I need yeah. that right now. In the state of the world, all I yeah. need is to be in Henry Cavill's arms. That's all I. That's all I want. Anyway, <laughs> it got me thinking. What, what were we talking about? It got <laughs> me thinking. It Ooh. got me thinking about Ooh, a few all times hot. that I've watched trailers for films that I wouldn't normally have watched, but we had nothing else going on, so we said, "Oh, let's watch this. Why don't we give this a go?" Sure. Wait. So, is this a Netflix problem? This no, not really. It's more of a, a trailer to final edit of the movie problem. There's a Give us another right. example. Give us another example. So there's a film we watched um, a few weeks ago called A Fall from Grace. Okay. Now, I'm not I'm not expecting you to have watched this because it was probably on the top page of Netflix for about a day before it disappeared. Can, can I guess? Go on. It's a light-hearted romantic comedy okay. about a, a lady called Grace okay. who loses a high-flying job in uh, oh, uh, publishing. Okay. And learns to love again right. through a bakery. I've okay. got a guess. Go on, hit me. Is it an old woman who has a fall and can't get up? And she's called Grace. And it's 90 minutes long and it's 80, <laughs> 89 yeah. minutes is her and on the floor. pressing you, her like, you've alert both, thing. <laughs> you've both got one fact right each. Okay. She falls in a bakery. So, she falls. No. The woman's name is Grace. Okay. We both the got that. character right. behind it. And yeah. at the start of the movie, an an old woman jumps off the top of a house. Oh my god, I was close. So you, were, but it wasn't her. So uh, the story, the, we watched the trailer, and it appeared to be sort of like a courtroom thriller, almost. In that okay. she she was a very reputable member of the community. Um, she met a guy, and he ended up being like a con man. So it sure. was all about the the divorce around that and stuff like that, and. We we assumed it was a bit of a maybe a bit of a thriller, but more, mainly like a courtroom drama about the events that led up to yeah sure that led up to that moment. Okay. So we thought, oh bollocks, let's just watch that. So we put it on, and as I say, the very first shot was an old woman jumping to her death off the top of her house, wow. and I just said to Liz, I'm not sure this is what we thought it was. <laughs> <laughs> so we proceeded, we proceeded to watch it, uh, and Grace, the main character, was in prison. For killing her husband. Okay. Now it turns out she had married was a she much the young, old lady. She no, she was a different lady. She's sort of, uh, I would say, about forty-five. 
Um, okay. So she had met a, a man, a younger man, um, and he had basically swindled her out of uh, quite a lot of her money. Nice. I'm, I'm, I'm giving you the York notes here rather than, <laughs> rather than the... Uh, he, nice. he was very charming and then he ended up swindling her out of a lot of money. Anyway, was it Henry Cavill? Because Henry Cavill did that. Because he could have got away with it. You, Henry, Cavill, Henry Cavill would have got... She would have thanked him for taking so much she, of her money. I, I would thank Henry, him. I swear, there's no need to swindle me. You can have it. Yeah, yeah just take just, it. Just, <laughs> take, just take it. Take what you want. Just hug me. I'm going to picture Henry Cavill while you talk about this. Keep going. Okay, good. Um, oh, Henry! Anyway, she's, it sort of gets to a point where she's just at the end of her tether, this woman. And <laughs> he's, do, he's monologuing in his chair, in her because he refuses to leave her house, because legally he can stay there, even though she's trying to chuck him out. So she's at the end of her tether, Graces. I see what's so, happening. So, she, so he's sitting in his chair monologuing, mm. and you just see sort of slightly out of focus in the background, she grabs a baseball bat. With a pine cone on it. And it just sort of, she gradually creeps up on him. And in graphic... Oh, so she's going to take him outside for a game. Yeah, for a yes. lovely game of baseball. Yeah. Yeah. To and then, and then yeah. she'll talk reasoning to him. That's what yeah. you think's going to happen based on That's the That's what I think's going to happen. What happens <laughs> is <laughs> that she beats the living shit out of him with this baseball bat in gruesome detail. Oh. And we're getting to a point now where I'm like, this is not a courtroom drama. This is a horrible no. slasher movie. <laughs> that I wish we weren't watching. Um, it was it was just a painful experience. But by that point, you're invested in the movie and you go, right, I have to carry on. Okay, I need to fine. know what happens to Grace. Oh, no, Grace is dead. So, I need to know what happens um, to her. So, great, so the husband's dead. Or is he? Or is he? She dumps his body in the basement. Or does she? Because you okay. would. Um, I mean, she has given him a hell of a beating. Fair play to her. Yeah, fair play. Um, so she abandons him, and I, th I think she handed herself in or something like that. Um, I can't remember. Anyway, there's a court case. It's not important. Um, there is a court case, out, so you were right. So he, And then by the time um, someone comes to remove the body, I think it was her son, the body is gone. <gasps> oh, my God. Oh, my God. And it turns out her best friend during the movie is his mother, and they go around conning people out of their money. But and then just disappear. But she's been her it. she's been her <laughs> best friend. She find out she's been her best friend for five years. So they've been doing the long the long play here. The long con. That's a own... very that's a very long that's a long griff. It's it's a long. It is. But on the, on the side, they have a dungeon in their house. This mother and the son, who was the guy she thought she killed, and her husband, but wasn't, and then killed him, but she wasn't dead. You see him later. It turns out they got a dungeon in their house where they keep pensioners and what? claim their sort of national insurance or whatever money and just right. keep it. And they keep them in the dungeon. And that's why the old woman at the start jumped off the top of the house. Because she Shit. was being kept in a dungeon for her money. Well, um, thanks very much for coming in and pitching uh, this to us. Yeah. Um, it sounds like the kind of movie that we need to disguise in the trailer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And they did. It looked viewers. like a courtroom drama, and by the end, it was just people jumping out of like dark buildings at each other and corridors and shooting wow. each other. You know, when when I heard that Adam Sandler is signed to a six movie deal with yeah. Netflix, I was skeptical. But you but know, my God, a fall from grace was fantastic. <laughs> a laugh a minute. Yeah. Would um, you overall? I mean, I know you didn't like. I wouldn't like the visceral murder bits. Mm. But is it good? No. Okay, cool, 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 cool. It wasn't really, no. I, I just, <laughs> you, you watched the whole thing, though. We watched the whole thing because you couldn't. You sort of watched it and you thought, I'm here now, I might I as well. I can't look away. I can't not watch the end of this now because I want to know that this guy's either dead or not. And, yeah. it, and in I the end, was... in the end, her lawyer killed him in the dungeon. Oh, her right. Her lawyer went snooping and then she killed him in the dungeon. The mother got away and the movie ends with her conning a retirement home into giving her a job how okay. did he survive getting beaten oh they don't they don't bat? really dwell on that, that was that all part well, of it turns out the person who fetched the body was his mother but he must have regained consciousness to tell her where he was was he wearing like a like a really heavy duty no. like, skull cap or something not like, as, under no, under not, his hair if it was if no. he was it was a very um, good looking one that fit his head perfectly and made it look like his hair. I, I I've got to say, I, 
I'm fascinated by different people's Netflixes because we're all individuals and we all watch mm. different things. And there's so much stuff on Netflix, which you're probably just not even aware of on a, on a daily basis. Oh, so, yeah. And also kind of like knowing you, Chris Ray, and mm. knowing like your kind of like likes and, and stuff. I, that doesn't strike me as a movie that you no. would normally well, enjoy. Yeah, it so. was sold to me as a courtroom drama and I was a bit iffy then, frankly. Um, but I said, yeah, sure, let's watch it. Why not? And it's not the first time that's happened to me. We watched we watched Baby Driver a few years ago. And this actually, I actually enjoyed Baby Driver. I thought it was very good. Yeah. But Liz thought it was going to be a nice movie. This is inverted <laughs> commas here. Liz thought it was going to be a nice movie about cars and music. <laughs> Which it well, was not. It's about cars and music. <laughs> Spoiler alert. Kev, uh, Jamie Foxx gets impaled on some um, scaffolding. And Kevin Spacey gets his head run over by a car, yes. so it wasn't a very, it wasn't a nice movie about cars and and music. It was very much a violent movie about death and revenge. I mean, there was definitely music and cars. They were in they it. were there to be fair to the trailer company. Connected. Yeah, yeah. Did you ever like back in the day? I remember because because apparently I, I grew up in in a in a nineties stereotype of Britain. Um, I remember going to the post office oh. at the weekends and we would rent a VHS I remember to that. watch. Yeah. Well, I dare say and you and I frequented the same post office, John. Well, given that there was only one in our yes. backwards little village. Yes. Then yes, yeah. Um, and I remember the family, we rented this one movie and I, I, I think about it a lot, actually. It was called... I swear it's called something like Cookies Millions or something like that. And it was, and just like this Rev, it was meant to be like, yeah. oh, it looks like a heartwarming family adventure. And it's like a Sunday evening and we're all going to sit down and watch this movie. And it opens with an old lady putting a pillow over her head yeah. and then shooting herself in the face Ooh. with a gun. And I remember it's like right then and there, you know, when your, your entire family is watching something the the atmosphere just kind of changed <laughs> and it's oh like dear god we no yeah nobody wants to get up and turn it off and i i, I remember watching the whole thing and thinking like nah. it's not a bad movie actually and it wasn't quite as dark as the opening kind of made it feel but it's different when you're watching something with a loved one yeah you know sometimes like you'll quite happily watch something on your own which is a bit kind of darker and grimmer but like when the family's involved, you, you, it just gets so awkward. Yeah, horribly awkward. we had a similar thing when um, I might have talked about this on the podcast before, but yeah. I hope I haven't. When I was living in America, uh, my brother and I were very much obsessed with the show Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. And it was, you know, I've heard of it. Uh, have you? Yeah, cool. Uh, it's very, very little show. Not many people have heard of it. Um, and famous, as I'm sure you do actually know, for like transforming helmeted yes. colorful heroes, right? But also famous for being developed uh, by Saban International and Bandai, who were the two sort of big publishers. And one evening in America, my parents were like, "We want to, we want to treat treat the boys, me and my brother. We'll go to the VHS store and we'll get them a a movie. And we'll all sit down and watch as a family." And Mum found this one on the shelf that, from the cover and also the two brands, seemed to be in line with Power Rangers. It was called Giver. Ooh. Oh <laughs> no! Yes, yes, John. Yes, and it's a, what have you done? A, a live action transforming hero uh, adventure. On the cover was a dude in a power suit. He had a blue helmet with a sort of red eye in the middle of his forehead, and this cool spike coming out the back of his head, kind of like a mohawk. And Mum was like, "This looks great. We don't know anything about <laughs> it." So uh, we take we oh, take that man. home to our apartment that we we're staying in, and we put it on. And also, I, I should uh, put, put frame of reference that they have different certification over there in America for like, they don't have like PG uh -oh. and like 12 and, and 15. They have different things that we didn't understand at all, uh, which became... <laughs> we didn't very, know. We became very apparent very quickly when the opening scene shows Guyver, the hero, transform. Oh. He has blades that come out of his elbows. And he just opens a guy's throat, <laughs> <laughs> like flapping, flapping <laughs> flesh and blood everywhere. And it squirts, it squirts the word <laughs> Giver onto the wall <laughs> of a warehouse. And that was the title. And we'd watched about a minute and a half. And me and my brother were like, fuck. <laughs> and my parents were like, nope. <laughs> Take this back. And shut that shit down, which is. 
really disappointing. Oh, so they did. They shut it off. Yeah, unlike your story, they uh, they were like, no, 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 this is too much. I was 10 and Phil was 8, so... I guess they kind of had to. Particularly that that with may have been like irresponsible, that. have they? Um, the thing is, like, if you would, if if you and <laughs> Phil had been watching that on your own, yeah. you probably would have watched the whole thing. Oh, and, 100%. Like, and, 100%. and loved it, yeah. And I've watched it but since, it, and it is nowhere near as bad as I a as I remember it being, and b bad enough. Well, it probably was bad enough to stop a ten year old watching it, I guess. But there's worse out there. It was very, like, very trashy sort of late 80s gore. It wasn't, like, really good gore. It was that sort of, like, kitschy gore. But still. I, the awkward thing I find about that sort of thing is if, you, if you're in a family setting, and mercifully this hasn't happened in years now because I don't live at home, but if something comes <laughs> on TV, which is a little Ooh, hello. risque, Ooh. Ooh, a shall, little we saucy, say, shall we say, be it, be it a little sexy or a little mm. violent... If that ever happened in a, if that ever happened in a family setting, this silence would yeah. come across the room. <laughs> oh god, this horrifying and silence. You're all just like gripping <laughs> the arms of your chair, going like, I don't want to be the first person to acknowledge it because Yeah. I, I almost admire your parents for turning it off because I kind of feel like in my household <laughs> we all would have sat through the entire movie. <laughs> But that that's the same household that put you behind yeah. glass to enjoy fireworks and didn't let you hold a kite, but they would have let you watch Guyver full we've, run time. We've paid, we've paid for the rental. We have to watch it now. I mean, there's that. I remember... Um, I, I do remember... Um, I think I was around my grandparents once, and back, and back in the day on, uh, on BBC, like, 2, you'd get, like, The Simpsons mm. at, like, 6pm. Yeah. And then for a little while, it was Farscape oh, yeah. after The Simpsons. It was like a sci-fi thing. And I remember like convincing my parents and inevitably my grandparents to let us put like The Simpsons on. I, I was like, oh, we'll watch The Simpsons. <laughs> like, oh, I'm enjoying this. And then Farscape comes on. I was like, well, Farscape's fun. It's like Jim Henson and everything. And it's like he Jim does Henson all the puppets. Star Trek, basically, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly, yeah. And then, like, we turn the cat. It's like, I really want to watch it. I really want to watch it. Can you let me watch it? All right. You're right. All right. You can watch it. Turn it on. <laughs> What's the worst that can and happen? Instantly, the, the plot has uh, a lady who's been possessed by some alien being who appears to be able to, through her psychic powers, like, spontaneously cause people oh, no. to orgasm. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> and it's like, oh, no. Like, like just, and, and it's like, the mo it's like turning it off yeah yeah is worse in a way yeah because you acknowledge Cause like, yeah, well, how well, bad it, it is it then. says to the room that you know exactly what's happened just there that's what it says it says to the room that yeah, you know exactly. what's going on and it's filth whereas if you don't mention it then you could just yeah. you can palm it off as yeah. oh it doesn't affect me i don't i don't, I don't think that's, that's a big about. deal i've never seen anything like that therefore i don't know what i don't know what a yeah. breast is so um, a breast yeah. couldn't possibly <laughs> affect <laughs> me <laughs> i've I've only read about breasts in my yeah. biological textbooks. <laughs> you know, this is this is purely academic for me. I don't Wait, understand your, what's your going textbooks, on. Your textbooks, John, are they <laughs> illustrated? Show me these textbooks immediately. <laughs> these sexy, there's a sexy couple of like textbooks. brass. There's a couple of brass <laughs> rubbings in like the front. Page. <laughs> yeah, I feel like um, I would watch a TV show. Uh, that I liked, that that was completely unremarkable in an adult capacity, and then the instant my dad came into the room would be the episode where the the heroine yeah. got naked. And it's like, oh, for God's sake, like that never happens. And now you're here, and now she's there, and now I'm sat here, and and now my brother's here as well, and all the the cat's in here. Great, okay. And now my mum, <laughs> oh my mum stopped cooking to come in to see what all the fuss is about. Oh cool, okay. I'm gonna go through the window forever. <laughs> <laughs> but you're like i like the idea that you're watching a show which 99.9 percent .9 of the time yeah. is mostly fine yeah and your parents inevitably walking past the moment there's like a tiny bit of like tasteful skin yeah or like someone says a rude word and then the next thing you know you're in a week of bible studies <laughs> like just kind of you, can't, you can never watch that TV show again as long as you live. You're done with that show what is forever. This, what is this filth you're watching, Nick? What's this? Come on. I thought this was a nice show about space aliens. 
<laughs> I I I remember going to uh, uh, ha- stay over at a friend's house once, and I remember being dropped off. And in the moment of being dropped off, the friend going casually, <laughs> "Oh, I'm so glad you're here. We're go- I've rented Austin Powers. Oh yeah, we're gonna wa- we're gonna watch Austin Powers this weekend. Which bear in mind, I think like the first one is like a fifteen, or possibly something. if that. Like it's pretty tame." It's pretty tame. And I was like 12. Okay. And I remember my parents driving off and again, not saying anything. Also, they I heard found... they heard him say that. Oh, they heard they oh. heard everything. Oh yeah. no. Oh and no. I, <laughs> and I found out after the fact that they had gone and rented that movie <laughs> to check to what to watch uh. it purely to see what I'd seen. To see what you were being exposed to. Yeah, oh god, they gave me a hard time about, about But that's it. not your fault. So how was your weekend, John? Was it uh, shagadelic? (laughs) (laughs) I also, I think it's important to remember, and Chris Ray will back me up here. I was a good boy. Like I was the most boring, well-behaved lad. Yeah. And I remember, again, going over to like a friend's house. And I don't even know how this came up. Like there was alcohol we there. all had that friend though didn't we that friend who exposed yeah. us to the naughty shit not alcohol yeah. there was alcohol there and i didn't i didn't touch it because i was again i was a good boy a good i cannot boy. stress enough how boring i was were as you, a child were you 12 again <laughs> yeah something like 12 yeah that was a wasted and evening that <laughs> because my parents because my parents like heard that there was alcohol at this event party and i was like massive rave but i was like i didn't have any i I didn't i didn't touch the the bad juice as i've heard about it (laughs) yeah um and they made me try every drink in the spirit cabinet (laughs) what you must have been wasted at the end of that (laughs) to like scare me out of like my nascent alcoholism and look it had the opposite effect look at you now yeah. just look you're at now you dr- you're don't drinking you're a you're drinking a whiskey right now the fact <laughs> so that i have so, the fact that so you like gambling the fact that you? i have a bottle of well, whiskey here. to hand is uh, yeah uh, so you like hilarious. gambling do you well here have a whole carton of cigarettes <laughs> <laughs> oh god i'm anyway, remembering we... We've gone off. We've gone off. Now. We've gone off piece, dear. Something about trailers and movies do not matter. Do you have more? So do you have more you want to add on that? No, just that I watched the Anne Hathaway movie that did the same. It was supposed to be. It was billed as a comedy about her like being like telekinetically joined up with a monster. Oh. Like the trailer would make oh. you think it was like a I saw that. comedy yeah. almost. I saw the trailer, yeah. And it turned out to be like like bordering on a on a horror almost of her being abused by her childhood boyfriend. What? Yeah. Really? But the trailer made it look like a comedy. It's and like by... a comedy rom com sort of yeah, thing. Yeah, and it's it not at be. all like that. It's a re- it's really really heavy going that movie. It's called Colossal. Yeah, I remember the. Do ads. you suppose this is like trailers in general, or is it conceivable that Netflix is like remixing trailers? No, I to mislead you. No, I don't know. I mean, but why? But why would a company like netflix try to get me to watch a film that is not at all like the trailer all i can all i can do in that scenario is i've paid my subscription already all i can do then they've got my money all i can do is complain (laughs) the only thing i could do in that scenario is negative the but netflix will change the thumbnails yeah netflix does based change on thumbnails. your viewing it's true yeah. but I, I i think the issue that, that chris is trying to get at is the fact that netflix would never normally present this to chris because it because the algorithm yeah knows the kind of but shit the, that he likes i can look past the thumbnail i can look at it i can look <laughs> past, i can read i can i can look at a picture and go oh yeah all right and then i'll read the description a man is murdered horribly in the sewers what if and there's then a boob I think, in well, the no, I probably, I probably won't watch that actually, even though the picture of, of on the film is a flower. It's not I the murder. Won't bother, it's, the, it's the sewers that you don't like. Yeah. So I, it's watching a trailer that makes itself look like it's going to be a fun watch or a, or something like a gripping watch, like a courtroom drama, and just is people beating the shit out of each other and <laughs> loads <laughs> of jump scares minutes. and things like that. So that's what I don't like. And if it's going to be that, 
Tell me it's going to be like that. And either I'll choose to watch it or I won't. I probably won't. Um, <laughs> if I'm honest, I probably won't. If I won't. Uh, and then I'll watch something that I would enjoy. And then I'll give you a good review and I'll continue my subscription. You're the winner here, not me. It's very true. I um, I have a hate that connects, that dovetails quite neatly. Oh, here into we this. go. There we go. Oh, I see. This Fine. never happens. So, so fuck you, John. Just st- it's all right. Stay out. It, well, no, John, you can find a way to dovetail into my hate, and if you don't, then you're. you're if you don't, if you don't, you've ruined the show. You've ruined the show. And if you don't, I'm going to make you drink everything yeah. in the cupboard. <laughs> so you can't dovetail hates, can you? Here, have a whole carton of cigarettes. <laughs> I'm going to make you listen to every podcast that's ever been made. <laughs> That'll show you. <laughs> um, my hate is fan service in anime. Right. Oh um, wow! I'm glad you found something that relates so closely to uh, I mean, yeah. Chris I mean, Ray's. I'll be uh, I'll be totally honest with you. That seems tenuous at best. <laughs> Let me explain. The word fan service means tits, and the word anime means cartoon from Japan. So <laughs> <laughs> mono mono means one, and rail <laughs> means rail. <laughs> so it it dovetails in the sense that you'll be watching a show about I don't know. Uh, well, I've been watching one about kick-ass firefighters, right? Sure. <laughs> Don't and question then your par- that. And then your parents walk in and they all get And then your this. parents walk in and and then one of the firefighters' tits drop out. Sure. This happens with with some irreg- regularity in practically every Japanese anime that there is. And it will be a colossal tonal shift, right? You'll be in a serious scene where the stakes are high and someone's going to die and then some some little boobs will just drop in from the fr- on the right-hand side of the frame. And it'll be like... The, this is here now and i'm just like, <laughs> i'm just like why though why like we're not we're not in it that, i swear to god that, that their viewing figures would be utterly unaffected by a lack of this people almost, do not I'm go to afraid, anime i'm almost afraid to ask this question but i will go on who wants that and what do they want it for this is i think that's a perfectly valid question because i can't answer it well, I, I think i think i question. probably can and that's why i'm worried well, yeah, I suppose I probably can answer the question if I really think about it, but that's got to be a minority, right? Like, yeah, I, like, I hope so. I've, I've watched YouTube clips of some of my favourite scenes from some of some of my favourite animes, and I've On seen... On repeat, for hours. Yeah, exactly, and, and I'll do it again. And I've seen in the comments below, this is like YouTube comments, so this is the lowest of the low, right? These, these, <laughs> these are the people on the internet that we cannot trust and we cannot listen to, and, and we mustn't, we mustn't we let them into our lives, them. right? <laughs> Because they represent everything that we that we abhor and that we and that we cannot align with. And they, these people say, <laughs> oh, shame about the fan service though. They say it. <laughs> so if they're saying it, when, where does that leave the rest of us? We did it, folks. I, we finally I... found the limit. <laughs> I, as a Star Wars fan, see fan service as, let's say, um, putting R2-D2 where he doesn't yes. belong. So... I don't, I've never seen fan service until this last few minutes as tits. This is the thing. The word fan service, generically, the term, I think is what you're referring to. So it's like giving something to the fans mm. that makes them Give go, the people what they want. Yeah. Sort of thing. In a, yeah. in a Japanese anime context, it's nudity. But it's never like full okay. on. It's like, you know, it'll be like covered, but it's, but it's still happening yeah. nonetheless. Or it's something stupid like a character will trip over and he'll fall face first into a girl's chest. That sort of thing. <laughs> I know, right? I just like the thing is, is that it's not even real people, right? These are these are drawings. Mm. So the draw the drawing fell into the drawing. Yeah, it's not actually happening at all. You're not even getting anything out of seeing a woman's body, or, you know, or in rare cases. But then, a man's but then some, body. but then some people probably are, aren't they? That's the concern. But 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 they're not because I went to YouTube comments and they're not. <laughs> they don't like it either. <laughs> at what point? But, but yeah. What was the turning point, though? Because I reckon there's probably as many people going like, "Well, oh, this is a bit tasteless." Ooh. I expect I expect realism in my. I like my I like a- I like anime. the idea that you think blokes from the East End are sitting there going, "Well, <laughs> I don't know about this. I think I think this anime has gone too far now." Actually, <laughs> I'm not sure about these big eye cartoons. I've, I've been watching anime for 35 years, <laughs> and I've never seen anything like this. <laughs> Baruto, in my day, we had a Naruto, and we were happy about it. All right, this Baruto <laughs> bullshit. <laughs> I know what I like, and I've been going down the Amers for forty years, and I've been going, I've been going down the East End, and going, going to Dagenham, and I, I don't, I do not like this. 
I'm not happy. I will not stand for it. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go on YouTube right now, <laughs> and I'm gonna say this is pure fan service. I'm gonna write. I'm gonna write a comment, and I'm gonna say, you know what? I really do not like the fan service in this show. <laughs> <laughs> I do not much care. <laughs> and then, and then, he, and then he clears his throat and goes, <clears throat> right. Time to write my YouTube comment. <laughs> <laughs> L- licks the nib of his quill. Of his quill, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And he's wearing a French Renaissance wig. <laughs> oh, I say, I've been going down the hammers for 40 years. I don't <laughs> much care for this. I do enjoy a, tri- I do enjoy a trip to Dagenham. <laughs> Dagenham, as we say. Dagenham. De- dear sir. To whom first. it may concern. <laughs> I... It's like a nervous tick with anime yeah that's like the weird thing like you could have even by anime scandals like a grounded down-to-earth realistic quote-unquote show storyline or whatever yeah and then just bedoying yeah just like there they are just just there they are yeah yeah you've put it very well before in the past john and you've uh i think it was you who said this oh thank you thank you nick yeah i'm sure yeah let's let's credit you with it regardless um that uh, anime is a little bit like pantomime in the sense that it has these weird rules that nobody ever really agreed to and nobody specifically goes to it to enjoy them. Like, no one goes to a pantomime and looks forward to going, you know, he's behind you. Oh, no, he isn't. Oh, yeah. yes, he is. No one gives a shit no, about that. No, nobody goes to a pantomime and goes, oh, gosh, I hope that Dick Whittington makes it to London. No one gives <laughs> a fuck about the plot. It's not, that's not why you're there. No, exactly. You're, you're there for two two people dressed as a cow. Yeah, you're, you know, you're there for a dame, a dame, uh, a cat, yeah, and and all that behind you bullshit, and a principal yeah. boy, you know, and it's like it just it's a thing that's made up of all of these weird little, like you say, almost ticks. Like it, it just can't help itself but do these things because otherwise it isn't really a pantomime. And I think that's I think that's the way anime operates. Is like, well, if I don't get a boob in every like three or four episodes. Then it's not an. A- I haven't succeeded. I haven't made an anime. I've just made some some grand, awesome story that has worth <laughs> and value. Uh, that's all I've done. And who the fuck gives a shit? Just made a about groundbreaking that? cartoon, Nick. What what use is that? Who wants that? You know, you know, like I think I kind of think of like American TV, where like they started doing that thing where <laughs> they start advertising the next show at the bottom of the. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and you'd ha- you'd have like a, a, a an animated overlay that would pop up, and it would be like It'd be really jarring. The main char- yeah, the main character from the next show would just appear at the bottom of the screen and go like, huh, and just kind of like fold his arms and go, huh, yeah, and, it, and then it would be they, like they all they point to each other like this guy, no, this guy, both of us, <laughs> and it would be like coming up next, heaven can date or something like that, and that'll be you know. <laughs> I'm amazed that anime hasn't evolved to the point where they've just extracted the fan service and turned it into like an animated overlay. Yes. So regardless of what you're watching, there's always just a cartoon girl with her tits out kind of. Yeah, it's like corner. we don't even have to animate it into the show anymore. We just have her slide up at, say, five minutes, 10 minutes and 15 minutes in an episode. Just slide up as a little cutout, shake her, shake her bowsoms and slide back down again. It's like, there we go. We've done that. <laughs> There we go. Yeah. Oh, it's just... It's frustrating because, I'll be like... be honest. Yeah, go on. Be honest. No, I was going to... This is going to be an inane comment compared to the larger point. I but when wait. John said Dick Whittington, I thought he was going to go in a different direction. <laughs> <laughs> and we're all glad he didn't. Well, I'm, I was quite relieved, actually. Yeah. And the podcast... He was a local lad. Really? What about Dr. Foster? He was around from around here. Or he came in. He came from Gloucester. Well, he, yeah, he, vis- he visited, didn't he? He visited. Is Dick Whittington from Cheltenham? He... He's from Gloucester, where's, wasn't where's... he? Why is everyone... I thought he was a fictional character. Well, yeah. But why uh... is everyone going to or from Gloucester? Who the fuck gives a shit? <laughs> when, you don't, how, you don't how, wanna... how, how dare you? You don't mean that. No, you don't want to stay. <laughs> it's, a, it's, a pla- it's a place that you pass through. Oh, okay. I don't know about Dick Whittington. Is, isn't there some historical basis? There we used to be a pub in Gloucester called the Dick Whittington. Hold on, I'm going to Google him. But that's all I. That's all I know. Dick. Oh no. He was mayor of London. I want to say Gloucestershire. And, and he and he and he had a live-in oh. partner who dressed as a cat. He was apparently times. real. Yeah, he was apparently based on a real person called Richard Whittington, who was born in 1354, oh, a wealthy okay. merchant and later Lord Mayor of London. 
That's a little segue. Oh. Nicely done there. Um, my, my. Doesn't say anything about where he came cat. from. Uh, it does say oh, something about a cat. Him. Yeah. Uh, it you says, up, John. I feel like you, control, think you must have dreamt that. Do control F, Gloucester. See if it's in there. Okay. Mind you, you're on a Mac, so I don't know what. It's Command F, John. Chill out. Chill your boots. <gasps> oh my God, it's come up. Uh, the real... Oh, here we go. Oh, oh. Uh, contrary to tradition, the boy was fleeing towards home. The real Whittington's place of origin being Gloucester, lying westward. Oh. There you go. It appears eight times in this document. <sighs> boy and ca- boy and a cat from Gloucester. There you go. Gloucester, Gloucester. Published in Gloucester. Wait, he, he actually had a cat. He actually had a, ha- had a cat. Yeah. If I go back to the beginning, there was something. Why about... would he not have a cat? Everyone well, has. if I was if I was walking from Gloucester to London, you wouldn't take a cat. The f- no. I'd eat the cat if it was a 13th yeah. century. Well, That's did. good protein. The legend what describes his rise from poverty-stricken childhood with the fortune he made through the sale of his cat to a rat-infested count- uh, country. What? He sold there the cat. Go. Sold the cat to a rat-infested country, apparently. If you What's were whole- walking from Gloucester to London, what do you think would be the most troublesome animal to walk <laughs> with man? <laughs> what do you say, John? Owl? Man. Owl? Man. Yeah. <laughs> I said well, I think an owl would be tricky. A turtle would be slow. I, uh, I say, um, more man is the deadliest prey. Of all, uh, I would imagine yeah. that would be quite difficult to to have accompanying you. But then it you depends. It depends if you feel person. that like that would be a personality clash or just difficult logistically. Yeah. How how long would it take you to walk from Gloucester let's, to London? Let's town? find out. Let's find out. You gonna... Oh, let's have a Google race. Ooh, so you can get I'm there quickly. I'm not going to do I'm the Google bothering. Gloucester to London. Bothering. Walk. Get on Google Maps. So it would take you 34 hours. That's not that what? bad. Really? No, it's not actually. I thought it'd be more than that. Yeah, but with no rest. From Gloucester, if you walk from Gloucester to Central London without rest, that would be it four would take days. You 34 hours. That'd be four days if you had a sleepy each night, probably, wouldn't it? Yeah. Yeah, but you could, you could, in you could, in theory, do it in just over a day or a day and a half, non-stop. What? Really? Yeah. If you didn't, if you didn't stop. That's stop. what it says. That's what Google says. That's what it says, John. You can't just Google. Well, Google wouldn't lie to me. I'm sure. Why would Google lie? Well, except for profit to make Chris Ray watch films he didn't want to watch. Well, ah, well, that's a good point. <laughs> you got hate, John. Oh, uh, have you have you done with your uh, cartoon boobs? I think we've moved on to Dick Whittington now. So I was hoping you had a yeah. chance to segue into that. I don't know. <laughs> have you? Can, yeah, can you? We've we've left it wide open for you here, John. Yeah, look at the potential with Dick Whittington. To dovetail onto yeah. Dick Whittington. He had a cat. Little, he... little less of a Dick Whittington, a little more of a Dick Whip it out. Oh, um, oh, oh my goodness me! Thank you. I was quite proud of that. I hate daylight saving time. <laughs> Oh my god. That's going to be a hard I... one to resolve. <laughs> well, yeah, cuz with me I can just conf- I can just stop watching anime, but with you, <laughs> I don't know how, <laughs> I don't know how you get around that. <laughs> You're well, just going to have to learn to live with it, John, I think. I think you are. It, well, I've I've lived with it for 34 years now, coming up mm. on 34 years. You I forgot how old you were, didn't you? Is that when it is that when it was introduced? Uh, yes. Well, they had to they had to celebrate my birthday in, yeah. in my birth in some way, um, but yeah, like it annoys me because it forever confuses me. <laughs> uh, it is really hard. Well, I, well, I say forever, but I guess ultimately you get used to it after after a few days, and then you're fine for the following six months. But it's now getting dark at like half four in the evening. Yeah. And I want. Well, that's to... it. It's interesting you say the evening there, John, because you about six months ago you would have said half four in the afternoon. Yeah, John. Wouldn't you. Yeah. And that's your yes, mindset indeed. now. It's your mindset now that you think half four is the evening. Yeah, because it's getting dark. That's because why. of daylight saving time. Well, here's this is the thing. I'm I blame daylight saving time. Here we go. But I'm aware that technically now, as of the start of November, we're not in daylight saving time we're now in normal back on yeah help me out here we're back on regular time i don't know what greenwich mean mean time greenwich Greenwich, Greenwich the time the time now the time now is gmt the time when the clocks go forward is bst that's right british summertime yeah but what i find weird is that my brain can never a hundred percent 
wrap itself around that because I feel that like you're making yourself sound stupid here. John. Well, I am. I'm. A, I am a raging idiot because I, I feel like <laughs> this is why you weren't allowed to light fireworks, John. This is why. Yeah. <laughs> This is why time. you were hiding behind the patio doors all those years. Because you were an hour out because you didn't understand daylight savings. They said, trying to launch a fire. No, they, were all, they were all outside. They said, John, <laughs> the fireworks will start at five o'clock. And he turned up at six. <laughs> That's why you, you were behind all. the no, patio my, door. My, yeah, you weren't my dad, my, the thing is, my dad would hand me a lit firework and say, now bear in mind, this will, this will detonate in yeah. five seconds. And I'd be like, okay, so six seconds. Six seconds. Yeah. He'd be like, no, 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 so no. An hour and five seconds. he's explained your answer. <laughs> my point is october october rolls around right and you go oh the clocks are going back mm. so you're like oh marvelous that means you're all gonna get an extra hour in bed and we all get happy about that whoop, whoop. well it's a bit of a trade and i isn't get it? that i get that come october we're switching back to the actual mm. time like what it should be sure but that always feels weirder to me because we're the other way because we're losing it feels like we're losing light is what you're getting at yeah and yeah. and now like the evenings are so dark but the mornings like, are lighter for, for, for a, yeah, for but a no bit one does for a bit no no one achieve, apart from me who gets up at like half five every day apart from you so, so you're the one person in this god forsaken yeah. blasted country that benefits from <laughs> i know i'm 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 a, I'm a confused just harrowed man like i cannot make any sense of it and and also like it's always business about like oh so the clocks are going back so that means we're gaining an hour you know what you know what i mean like it, it, it's, admit, it's for one thing my brain I, can't yeah, calculate easily. i can't i can't see it clearly in my head so when someone goes to clocks going back i always have to go so that means we get an extra hour and i, and I always have to like qualify it because i i find it really hard to pass what it means in my head but i fundamentally understand and accept it <laughs> i mean i mean i'll, I'll be honest okay. i mean are, are coming across like morons at the moment okay fine well i'm less i'm less so okay just for the record Nick, I'm Nick's less certainly so less of a moron, of a moron. <laughs> yes less of a moron i'll take it i'll take it the thing is i mean if we if we were more of a moron. salt of the earth like you like well, yourself the red, thing is you know, the mobiles we... do it for you now you wake <laughs> well you see you wake up and your mobile <laughs> says the right time because it does it automatically the only thing you have to do is push your your uh, um wall clock back yeah and you were having... this is what i this is what i mean though like i was like oh i know the clocks are changing tonight so in the morning i'll have to change the time but then I wake up, there was, um... and most of the devices have already changed themselves. Yeah. So then I find myself going around going, I now have no idea what time it is. But you I don't know, know, but you know, have you, you haven't corrected? changed the analog devices. Yes, so you know which well, one no, we should change. Uh, I think. I think what John's saying is that he doesn't know what he has and hasn't done no. because he is drunk. Yeah. He is always drunk in the morning. <laughs> you see, he's all pepped up on and also who. <laughs> But also, who knows what happens in the now lost hour? Well, do you remember? I was about between... to say, do you remember one year we were out when the clocks changed? We were out in um, what yes. was, used to be called Subtone in Cheltenham. Yes, we were. And we were like, we were like, so the clocks are going back. So now it's one o'clock. So we've got an extra hour out, basically. And we still got in. A, we still got well, in I, about four. What <laughs> I like to do, what I like to do, is choose when to take the hour. Yeah. So That's on the idea. evening <laughs> that the clocks are going to go back, you go, okay, I know. Uh, something really exciting, like I'll put a wash on, you know, at like seven o'clock, and then the wash takes an hour, and then I put the clock back, and the wash took no time. The magical washing machine washed my clothes instantly. You're just playing fast yeah. and loose with it. I kind of, I can, look the way. The, you got to have some the way fun I, with it, John. No, the way the way I see it is, we all have to do it when we're asleep because if anyone is conscious when the hour switches, yeah. they might die. Then their heart might stop. No, we so, all have our own independent ribbon. There of would time. be enough people who think they can do whatever they want in that hour of time that they've just reversed, and it will have no repercussions. The problem, yeah. the problem is because because just go out and kill a man cause, cause the, during that hour. They've lost. Yeah. Cause, you should. The hour, the hour is meant to change, kind of like sometime after it's midnight two, it's two, two, it? two o'clock in the morning is, it changes and it goes back to one yeah that's my point Meant nobody to. you can't nobody can stare at it 
like directly. You can't see it, like because because it's too the it'd be, human it'd brain be like, can't it'd be comprehend like the ring. it. So well, your, your someone human will just brain. find you and it'll be like the ring, and you're like, like this. My, <laughs> this is my point. Like everybody has to be asleep before the great yeah. switch over. Otherwise, because otherwise, if if, any, if anyone tried to stay awake, you're gonna run into your past self, your nega self. When the clock, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you have to defeat. <laughs> In combat, your nega self yeah. in order to survive to the next morning. If, if you're awake when the clocks change, yeah, you have to fight yourself, and whoever wins gets to go forward. Yeah, get, gets to inherit your life. Every time yeah. this happens, that happens for everyone. But the advantage is, if you're asleep, you'll automatically defeat him because he can't you... he can't fight a sleeping person, and you will sleep fight him to death. Would you rather be <laughs> replaced by uh, an exact clone of yourself with your memories? Yeah. Like, so they think they're you, or yeah. would you rather be placed by a proper imposter who knows what they're doing? Well, wait, but hang on. Okay. Wait, but I've you're got... dead either way. Uh, no, you're watching. Okay, so well, yeah. you might you might be dead, but you're you can see what's happening. But this imposter is to to all of my friends. He's he's passing it off. He's succeeding at fooling yeah. the Oh, Lord. sure, absolutely. So yeah. what? He's wearing a Except disguise it... of my face and everything. He's exactly like you, yeah. Nick. Except he's, so I, he's I a reckon... slightly better dancer. Yeah. Well, that's impossible. Yeah. That's the only. That's the only. Yeah. That's <laughs> no, you're right. What I, re I reckon. <laughs> so it's you, a... you move like an angel. <laughs> so it's an exact replica of yourself with your memories, or it's put someone who's pretty much the same as you, but slightly better looking and slightly more talented. Which would you rather replace you? Oh. The thing is, if I suddenly got, let's say. 10% more attractive. No, but you would you wouldn't be. We wouldn't be able to you handle it. No, your your replacement. No, I wouldn't no, be able to deal with is, it. That's my point. I I'd be dead. I'm dead and gone. It doesn't no, matter. No, you're not I, dead. You're not dead. You're it's like Big Brother or something. You're in a cube you're just, in the sky. You're in the you're you're behind the curtain. You're in a cube. Well, when does that end? Where, where do I get my life? You back? never get it. Oh, back. you wouldn't. You wouldn't, but it'd be fun to watch. That's a lot like being dead though. It is. Um, but you still get yeah, food. Yeah. But you, you still get food, yeah. <laughs> Okay, it gets, it gets posted okay. through a little. Slot. And you'd probably be on TV after you died. But the thing is, like, Definitely if the be. options, if the options as you're describing them, Rev, are, I'm gone, but I've been replaced by an identical version of me with all yeah. my memories. Yeah. Or I've been replaced by somebody mm. who knows how to imitate me perfectly. Yeah. But is ten to twenty percent more attractive. Yeah. And more I talented. think. I think people would notice. No, no I don't I think, think they no, would. We'd, we'd, just be like, would. we'd just be like, hey, John, you've had a fucking amazing be, haircut. Like, shit the no, bed. <laughs> it'd be you, but everyone would go, fucking hell, John, you look so good at the moment. I, but but I it'd, reckon... be, it'd, be like, it'd be like that. So which would you prefer John, out of those two? John, what is your skin routine? Because fuck. I reckon, no, but here's my point, though. If you said, like, oh, you're kind of, like, one or two percent more attractive, All I'd right, be let's like, say that. okay, let's say that, that's then. a good haircut, or... That's as as Nick said, a good kind of like okay, um, okay. skin routine. So my, my, mis my mistake was making you too attractive. All right, fine. Let's yeah, never make if, if I came if, if I suddenly back. if I suddenly came in tomorrow and it's exactly me except I no longer slur my G's and D's and I've just got this epically chiselled chin. Okay, I think that would be quite distracting. Okay, no, fine. <laughs> All right, so you're let's say you're a you're a percent or two better. Not that someone would notice, except let's say Lucy would probably notice. Lucy might because, notice because she knows you better than anybody. And Lucy has to live in fear of this new. But Lucy can't. Lucy can't say anything because it's part of the game. Part of the game. Oh, what? Oh, there's a game. Wait, whose game? I don't know. Okay. There's a game. Let's say it's right. It's a game. All right, fine. Okay, it's a game. You're These on are a people's game show. lives, Rev. It's not a game. You're on a game show. But it's also you a have game. To be, you have to win. Everything your heart's desire, and you have to do it, so you can't get out of it that way. <laughs> so don't try. And you get replaced by a replica of yourself with a, your exact memory, or someone who knows they're a clone, and they're tricking everyone, except, let's say, your wife. Okay. And they're, let's say, 2% better than you in every way you can imagine. I'd definitely pick the clone of me. Are they 2% bigger in every dimension <laughs> as well? No, I said better. So, what do you define as? Do you define bigger as better? I, I would say I that no. there's a factor that might suggest that, like, just being larger in every dimension would would also be an improvement. But if you're larger in every dimension, who would notice? Well, I this think we is all. What I'm wondering if you were two percent larger in height 
width and I'd like, depth I'd, and girth. I'd like to be two percent larger in height. That'd be nice. <laughs> the thing is, but also, but but you scale perfectly. It's not just that you're two no, percent like, higher. It's like someone held shift and 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 made you a little larger. I think we'd notice yeah. straight away. I but someone would, someone really would just weird. go. I someone, I someone would just go. Oh, John's standing a lot closer to me today. <laughs> This is what I wonder, though. I just wonder, like, if 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 Rev, like, you are now suddenly four inches taller, shall we say? Sure. That's that's an over exaggeration, but you're you're you've suddenly How gained dare four, you? you're four <laughs> inches taller, but yeah. also everything about you is bigger. So your eyeballs are now larger. Like, I wonder when will you? When, at what point would the human brain suddenly notice that you are just a slight giant? Like a tiny bit giant. No, but this is but this is how that person has been all their life. Your this is your replacement. Yeah, but they've been so growing they would, in a they lab, would be fine. Presumably. If if this was within a person who exactly resembled you but had your memories, they'd suddenly go, Holy shit, why do I feel thicker and taller? <laughs> and why am I two percent better at everything? Why do I feel thicker with three C's? Why am I so thick? Yeah, yeah and you spell ev- yeah, exactly, you spell everything twice. Yeah. Would you yourself, if you woke up tomorrow and you were two percent bigger in every conceivable dimension? Yeah. Would you? I'd be. I'd when, be annoyed. I'd be annoyed. When? Well, would you notice? Is my question. Yeah, because you bump into yeah, things. Yeah, I would definitely. I would. De- I would. Uh, my feet would hang out of the bed as well. You. Yeah. Everything about like your clothes would fit differently. Like everything about your in- daily interactions would suddenly be yeah. odd, and you'd be like, "What has happened? Has the house shrunk?" Yeah, I've worked, it, it, I've worked myself into a real, real tight like situation in the bed where I'm perfectly in a situation where <laughs> I'm completely covered, but my feet don't stick out the end. If I was two percent bigger, that would go to shit. Yeah, the whole balance would be lost. Yeah, yeah, but like you still haven't answered the question. We're fucking way like, off. T- I'm in in metric units. I'm. I think we're getting bogged down with this, to be honest. But like I'm saying, metric. John's very serious. I'm a hundred and eighty-two centimeters. That's too much personal information, John. We'll have to bleep that. Tall. Yeah. Okay, so I'm, I'm hundred and eighty-two. People, people are tall. going to be able to actually do this in person if you give them this much detail. Yeah, they'll build so, you a Lego or something. So one percent of. I prefer actually that. I prefer that one. The Lego, the Lego option. See who notices. Okay. Is that the third okay, option, so, Lego Man? Lego or okay. Lego, or you're made of Lego, but it, you're you. <laughs> okay, so help help me here. Help me here. Right. So if I'm 182 centimeters tall. No, but I don't care about this. Th- <laughs> no, 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 bear with me. So one percent. That's too much. That's too much plastic at the moment. We can't. We can't waste so, that much plastic. So one percent is one one point eight centimeters. So two percent. Three point six is three point six. But thank you, thank you, Nick. So my point is. I'm just trying to hurry it along. <laughs> if I gained. 3.6 centimeters in height tomorrow would you i or anyone notice you would definitely notice i would say you would i think i think yeah, you notice. would notice i think it's like when peter parker gets up in the first spider-man film and he goes holy shit i've got a six pack bruv yeah he says that that's the that's actually a line just, that's the, i think that's the line isn't it yeah <laughs> doesn't he also briefly look at his peen he does briefly look at his peen which is weird because like has it changed? And if so, why? Has it turned into now. a spider peen? It's either spider more peen. muscular. Yeah, like it's, e- it's either a more muscular peen or it has hairs on it. Either way, to, either towards. way, it's bad because your peen is not supposed to have muscles on it or hair. Yeah, on yeah. it itself. Yeah. Or, exactly. or for that matter, like like shiny obsidian black. It shouldn't be that either. <laughs> which I would argue I is would, what a spider would peen rather... would look like. <laughs> For the record, I would rather be placed, re- be replaced by the better version of me that knows what it's doing, because the one with my memories wouldn't realise that it was a clone and would not give me my place in the world back when the experiment was over. Oh wait, so there is an end to the oh yeah, the why experiment. not? Yeah, why not? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you see, I thought you were going going down the route of you just be happier. You'd just be happier if a more qualified and competent version of you was running your life. I mean, there's, you can interpret any any way you want. There's one I way mean. of looking at it, which is that if if there's a finite end to this game show or whatever the fuck it is now, um, if you put the better version of you in place of you, he might make some steps in your life. He might get you promoted. You know, he might uh, might get you a sports car. I don't know, get you more money, whatever. 
and then mm. and then you step back in and you get to benefit from all of his great moves maybe yeah but would he relinquish it i'd kill him yeah he'd, he'd have to it's under it yeah but if contract. he's better than you in every way is he better how than would me you kill him be- well i'd uh, surprise him the, the one thing he doesn't have is my stupidity and i would kill him in a stupid way yeah. <laughs> The worst thing that could happen if we did this social experiment for real is that he could steal my wife, my job, my house, and everyone I love. I feel right, but I thought it was a game show. Invited shot. him. Yeah, into... but apart from that, apart from that, I don't think anything could really go wrong with this. Oh, fine, cool. Okay. I'd go I'd go for the clone. I'd go for the clone because I think that's when, risky. When I inevitably have to hunt and kill the imposter to reclaim my life. I think there I would, would be stand... repercussions to that. There would be repercussions. I would stand to yeah, but you yeah, but a what you describe against yourself than no. a better self. Thank you. Thank you. Nick gets it. Yeah. Well, I I, I yeah. would rather fight somebody who has all my strengths and weaknesses than fight a fight a man who is basically me but more talented and 3.6 centimeters <laughs> taller. Yeah. We're definitely going with that. <laughs> John, what the fuck was your original hate? I have no idea. Um, daylight like saving. Oh yeah, oh yeah, that's it. That was it. Who's who's uh, who's got a love? Oh, oh yeah, God. I'll go for a love. Yeah, this is going to end up on something completely different. But my love is infographics. Oh 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 oh! I'll tell you, I love an infographic. I do a lot of um, sort of work on design projects i don't design myself per se i know nick does and Hello. Nick will be familiar will be familiar with an infographic i'm sure i've made many um, in my time yeah but recently because our designers are not around so much um Who are i've done a few infographics myself for some oh. award entries and things like Ooh. that and i bloody love it oh tell me about i mean it. compared to what Ooh. nick does i'm sure they're absolutely terrible but I didn't, didn't want to say anything but I've been working on little things for award entries. I've been I've been enjoying it, and I've got a little infographic Star Wars book over in the shelf. Oh, um, what? and I just An think why? Star Wars book. I've got a Star Wars the Star Wars saga in infographics. Oh, it's a I'd book. like I'd like to see that one day. Okay, I'll show it to you sometime. when the dark times are over. Yeah. Is it like number of droids? X- wings destroyed? That sort of thing. It's that it's that kind of thing, and sort of lightsaber, like uh, and head, a number of hands cut off and things like that. It's pretty good. Mm-hmm. But why why one. read about something for five minutes when you can look at a picture for ten seconds? That's what I always say. Well, yeah, you're playing right into my hand here. Sure, yeah. Um, words are you... shit. Yeah, could w- you words are awful. describe a, uh, a recent infographic you made and yes. how it made you feel? Absolutely, I could. <laughs> um, so I, um, for the company I work for, we work for a client that, um, <gasps> yeah, that, exactly. Uh, that operates four courts up and down the UK, and we've been entering garage. Mid- garage, sure, whatever. If you want to, if you want to be, if you want to be uh, uncouth Simple. about it, John. Yeah. Um, so I would did some infographics f- to show how their recently launched um, four court uh, reward system initiative has been successfully providing them with increased customer retention. Fucking hell! This is even yeah. better than that bit where John was trying to work out what one percent of one hundred and eighty-two was. Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> so anyway nick uh, <laughs> so i've been doing infographics to show how that has gone a few volumes i'll tell you have gone up by eight to ten percent well shit as a, on account of this uh new initiative so i agree uh, try, wow. try and put agree. that in an infographic better than i did because i think you can um yeah i i probably can <laughs> Yeah, I mean... Nick, tell us about some of your infographics. I thought you might chip in more. Uh, well, yeah, I was going to, actually. Um, oh, uh, God, there you go. See, I, I, I thought you would. I also do love an infographic, and I weirdly have probably been asked to do that. That's that's one of the things I get asked to do the most as a designer, probably. Yeah. Uh, between that and, like, brochures and, and whatever. But um, <laughs> I, I do like... I like how you can, like, depict data, but you can do it pictographically, I suppose, so it connects you... with the subject. It's good. Are you talking like annual sales review? Well, it could be so, like it could be anything. So, like an example I did recently was for a flooring company. One of our clients is a flooring, like they make laminate floors, and they wanted an infographic that represented all of the stats about their product. 
one of which was um, the different boards and their different thicknesses. Um, so I made the graph. <laughs> I know, right? I made the graph look like uh, floorboards with wood grain in it and everything. So that's pretty cool, right? Right? Did Did you see um, <laughs> a um? Oh, he's holding up an infographic now. Oh, he's holding so up. I've got, a visual... I've, the, be the beauty of doing this from home is that I can go and get the book that I've just been talking about. It so, looks delightful. I'm holding up the Star Wars infographics book to the camera, and this is oh, a double-page yeah. spread on on body parts lost in the Star Wars saga. Uh, Count Dooku's lost both his hands and his face, it looks like. Yeah, General Grievous has lost a couple of his hands, but he's got like 20 of them. The so. Wampa lost his arm, and it shows it all through graphics, so I don't have to read it. I don't have to watch the or movies, think. even. Fuck it. I don't, yeah. yeah, I wouldn't. Do you ever consider that there might be such a thing as too much Star Wars um, in your life? Not in infographics, I wouldn't have said, no. No. I thought you were going to say, John, that do you think there is such a thing as the as the ultimate infographic that, that means, that renders all other infographics yeah. defunct? There is the mm. one, the one infographic. Once there must be that, one out there somewhere. Once you've done that, then there's no point anymore. That just has that just possesses all of the information. It's just all, all there. All information. All the information you could ever wish to know and all the information there has ever been in yeah. one graphic. There was an infographic which went viral a few weeks ago, and it was meant to be like a bar chart <laughs> showing like average uh women's height in different countries did you see this one i did not no, i don't think no. so no so it was like you know show like you know oh uh, women in poland are like 1.6 meters on average or women in like lithuania are like 1.7 that sort of thing and it, it was meant to be a bar chart and instead of bars they had like uh like a little stick figure of a woman okay so it was meant to show like oh you know this is this is how their height kind of differs. Sure. But because, like, everybody's height was, like, one metre, you know, something, because humans we're are very close. within, like, yeah. a... Yeah, mm. yeah we're gen generally quite close. They'd cut off the bottom of the graph because they're like, well, that's just dead space. We don't need to show below, like, a metre right. because the average height is such that, like, yeah, everyone's taller than one and a half metres or something. But rather than cut off all the stick figures at, like, kind of chest level, they just shrank the stick figures down to meet the bit of the graph they cut off. And I appreciate that this is... I appreciate that this is a hard thing to describe in a podcast, but it created the impression no. that there were colossal oh, women God. in Lithuania. I've just found it! Yeah, would, it's Latvia. Would, like, Latvia, Latvia, Latvia yeah. and women are huge! <laughs> Latvian women can swallow like a woman from Estonia whole. <laughs> this basically. colossal woman will destroy us all. And the funny thing is, is that the tiniest, tiny little borrower sized woman there is an Indian woman. But she's actually uh, five foot one. And the colossal Latvian woman is five foot five. But <laughs> the way the graph is structured, Indian woman looks like a borrower and Latvian woman looks like a giant. <laughs> is it like, like the, the scale is an inch on in real life to two inches on paper? Yeah. It's something to that effect. It's horrifying, but very funny nonetheless. Very anyway, good. infographics. You must have a favorite. If you're listening, hey. you must have a favorite infographic. And if you don't, I encourage you to go and find one. Yeah, write in with your favorite <laughs> infographic. What's your favorite infographic, everyone? Come on, uh, fill our Facebook page with infographics that you love and would like to share with your friends. I drew a pie chart the other day. Weird flex. I, I was. I was quite proud of this. Was... This was this is this is my attempt at weird internet humor because what I did write <laughs> is I drew a graph which represented the number of Pac-Men on the screen, right? Right. Versus the number of ghosts on a screen. Very good. And if you represent that as a pie chart, it looks like a Pac-Man. That is very clever and very funny, obviously. But my only issue with it is that the Pac-Man part of the graph will be the ghosts, won't it? Yes, it will, yeah. So I'm very disappointed there. Well, I I um I put together that JPEG and I shared it on a popular social media platform. Very good. And I got and I got maybe four likes. So Fuck. I like to believe that I went 
quite viral with that one. I would say you have gone, yeah, pretty viral there. Well done, well done, John. Uh, I, I'm looking at a couple of comments on this um, this giant woman graph, and uh, <laughs> there's one which is, as an Indian woman, I can confirm that I uh, that I spend too much time hiding behind a rock, praying that the giant ladies and their Latvian general don't find me. <laughs> and there's, <laughs> there's another comment here which is. Stop yelling, you'll alert the Latvians. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, that's a very good infographic. It's, that's my favourite infographic, I think. Well, uh, Chris Ray appears to have disappeared. Yeah, he um, clearly doesn't give camera? a shit, so I'll just crack on. Um, and he can... Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh. Are, we... Are, are we not maintaining the order? Well, I thought it was me next. No, I thought I was a second love. No, because I dovetailed with with Christopher's. Remember, with my oh, with my sorry, anime yes, no, you're right. Yeah, you were rude the first time, and you're rude again. Uh, Please continue. I'll do it again, John. You can't stop me. Um, well, my love is a little bit of software called GB Studio, and I know I've told you about this before, but the joy of it. And Chris Ray is back in the room. Delight. My apolo My apologies. I just started my love. My love is a piece of software called GB Studio, which allows someone like me, who is, as we've established on this podcast, not the most intelligent person on the planet. Oh, I think but you're it, being a bit it allows. <laughs> well, I don't understand uh, daylight savings time, but yeah. Anyway, um, oh, yeah. That's it allows right. it allows someone who doesn't understand daylight savings time to create Game Boy games, and I cannot oh. stress enough oh. how important that is to the child Nick that lives in uh, that pilots this flesh mech that I call adult Nick. Because at the core of me, there is still a child in there, trapped, screaming, stuck in an adult life that he hates. But this this little piece of software allows me to make Game Boy games, and I, I'm just so happy. I'm just so happy. Uh, the thing I don't understand, Nick, like I'm very, I'm very happy for you, but mm. what I don't really understand is Tell me, John. that there have been, like a Game Boy is like a bad games console how, how, like like how dare like, how, dare. Like, how dare. my point is no no look i, no, I tell consume me, media i know that like a I, game I boy like, was I like, like media. a game boy was good for like 1993 right. right but we've moved on a bit okay we've got we've we've got colors right have you heard of a little thing called a playstation 2 oh I you know even i've got one of those girlfriend Oh, uh, well, the, we, fact, the fact that they made two suggests they didn't get it right the first time, doesn't it? There's only one fucking oh. Game Boy! Except for all the other how Game many, Boys. How many Game Boys do you own, by the way, Nick? Let's not get into that. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be embarrassing for me and yeah. for you. <laughs> <laughs> Somehow it'd be embarrassing for everyone. Yeah, everyone listening I, would... I'd, would ooh. <laughs> I'd like to say that you have a cabinet in which to display all your Game Boys and associated children... However, yes. mm. I know you're not quite that organised, and they're more kind of like scattered across around your house. Yeah, there is there is a cabinet, and there's a lot of them. Oh. There is a lot of them there. Well, it's not a cabinet; it's a shelf. It's a fancy shelf, though. Um, but but I do play on them a lot, so they find their way around the house as well. Yes, and Ali has commented multiple times that she probably says she couldn't throw anything uh, without it hitting a handheld console in our house at any point, <laughs> nice. in, including the bathroom. What if she threw a Game Boy a handheld console? <laughs> <laughs> then I would probably have to divorce her. It's the only, it's the only natural solution, I think. So, so yes, yeah, I will. You've go on. What I was going to say is that, like, you've got like weird proprietary handheld consoles, which were only released in like Indonesia Secret. in the summer of like eighty-seven <laughs> or something like that. Yeah, nice. on a on a hot summer's day, and they released it then and then only. Because it only works in the heat. <laughs> it was called like the, it was called like the Spiel nephew or something. <laughs> Have all your Game Boys got different operating systems then, or are they all are they all just got different like outer shells? So uh, I'm pretending I know what I'm talking about here. You, you no, that, was, that was quite you, smart. That's quite smart, Chris. Right, no, I, thank you. I appreciate good. that. I don't have many copies of the same Game Boy. If you see what I mean? So there's there's been a few mm. Game Boys. There's been the Game Boy, the Game Boy Color, the Game Boy Advance, that sort of thing. So sure. I, I have pretty much one of every kind of them. There are still more for me to get, but then there are also other handheld consoles, and then there are other sort of independent ones that play Game Boy games but aren't actually official Game Boys. So uh -huh. in short, answer, yes, I have multiple Game Boys that run different kinds of operating systems. Yes. I see. I suppose I, suppose I do. 
But um, the most important thing is that I there's been lots of like software out there that's allowed you know someone who can't code, which is something I can't do because it involves a lot of brains and a lot of maths ability, okay. both of which I don't have a lot of. I just can't really get plus coding. plus you lost that extra hour a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, which I needed to learn how to code. God damn yeah. it, that was my lost chance. That hour. <laughs> You were like, you're at your writing desk. It was like uh, one fifty nine in the morning. You've been like, working for hours. And you were so close to that revelation. And then the darkening happened yeah. and you got shunted back an hour in time and just yeah. lost all that knowledge. But there was this horrifying, like, chick, 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 sort of sound. And I was thrown back an hour and I'd lost everything. And then you had to, you had to fight your past self. Yeah, and he won. And now he's replaced yeah. me and he's 10% better than me in every way, including <laughs> size. Yeah. Oh, that'll happen. Yeah. Exactly. That'll happen. So uh, long story so you're, short, you, so you make your game on the computer, I assume. I use a computing device, such as uh, yeah. a, a desktop computer, to create sure. a game, uh, which uh, then has to be made within very, very strict limitations, because the Game Boy, as John very eloquently and quite rudely pointed out, is an old piece of technology. It's, it's, it's sh- an it, old it's bad. Shit. It's an old. It's like a Casio calculator. I mean, you don't it's have like to. Old... I mean, you don't have to say bad. You don't have to say that. So how how do you how do you upload it to the Game Boy then? So you can get Game Boy cartridges. That is to say, a cartridge Ooh. that goes into a Game Boy, but it has a little that's... drive in the cartridge, so you can put an SD that's card fun. into it. Oh. So I can put my game onto an SD card, put that into the cartridge, put the cartridge into a Game Boy, and holy crap! I haven't done this yet. By the that's, way. that's fun isn't it yeah but it's like i'm actually playing and then i could go a step further even like and i could get mm. a cartridge actually manufactured with my game on it so it actually looks like an actual game boy game that's good isn't with it? a little sticker on it with a bit of artwork on it and then i could put that in a game boy i could i could conceivably do that that is within my power now as a human man that is that is kind of magical. Like I, I do think about joking aside, I think back about the on the uh, consoles I've owned in my life, and I feel like the original Game Boy, and no, probably, probably, probably just the original Game Boy is probably like one of the most treasured things I ever owned. In it's my the life. most. I think it's the most magical of all. I think there's probably nostalgia there because it was my first games console, but also there's something about like getting a little bit of plastic plugging it into a larger bit of plastic and going on an adventure while you're in the back seat of a car there's something about that <laughs> which while you're in the boot of a car because you've been kidnapped <laughs> i have owned three games consoles in my entire life oh that's exciting tell Ooh. me tell me what they are would you would you care would you care to guess which three uh you have owned a mega drive no nope. No, master sorry, system. a master system. Master system, correct. Uh, you've owned a PlayStation 2. Correct, which was given to me as a gift by the, a guy who moved to Canada. I'm gonna Canadian guess... Dave. Canadian Dave, that Canadian was him. Yeah. That's, that's how he got that name. I'm going to guess the third and... one is a Game Boy. No, ah, a shit. Wii. Uh, a, a Nintendo Wii. Oh, a Nintendo, a Wii. Nintendo Wii. I bought one of them because I, lo- I wanted to play Mario Kart. You do like Mario yeah, Kart. Yeah, you see, it's, it's funny. Mario Kart's look... one of the only only handful of games that I can actually play. Yeah, you might look at Chris Ray and think, oh, he's uh, he's salt of the earth, you know. He, he, he'd... Uh... Certainly after this episode, yeah. Like, he, he'd, have a, he'd have a butcher on speed dial, or he'd know how to uh, <laughs> describe... I would. Uh... I, John, you're, li- you're joking, but I would <laughs> if I could. Yeah, there you go. He, he, he could explain... Um billiards to me or something like that yeah, but no uh, he's actually a bit of a savant at mario kart indeed i think this has been discussed yeah. before and, yeah uh, we've never we've never actually sat down and played mario kart as a th- as a trio we should do that and we should report back on we the should, show we should do that although because at the moment we can't do it for another month we can't do it for another month we should no. do that at some point well i feel a large component of chris ray's success was was sitting so close to the camera that the uh wii sensor was entirely blocked <laughs> by his broad commanding <laughs> but none of you, chest but none of, you, none of the rest of you use the sensor so it was irrelevant so he says if i was the only one using the sensor it doesn't matter if you were, if you were further away or not we do, however, also have to use the screen <laughs> and the fact that you were kind of like well, hugging it. Uh, excuses. Irrelevant. 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 Anyway, there you go. Do you ever love John? I do. And um, I think Nick, you're, and, 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 and of course, uh, Chris Ray, my good friend. He's also here. I feel this, this will segue quite nicely into both your passions. Oh, good. Um, I love digging a perfectly square hole. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Okay, right. So, you know, oh. we're all we're all down of the people. You know, we're all you know, 
earthly, realistic people. And, and, you know, we've all dug a hole in our lives. But have you ever dug a perfectly square hole? No. Is it not? No, it's an honest question. <laughs> well, Chris Ray, give what, it some thought. Um, <laughs> uh, but ha- all right, I'm gonna. I've got some questions. It's a simple question. Have you done? No, a, no. I, you I, I, a appreci- I appreciate. I appreciate that. A square but hole? well, John said perfectly square. Oh, I now I want to know if it actually was perfectly square for a start. Well, yeah. Otherwise, wait. This isn't. This isn't like play school. Don't no, put, don't put this okay. back on him. But what were you... All right. No, I haven't, John. What were you building... What were you digging a perfectly square hole for? Well, I, I think this is how it begins, Rev. You know, He I wanted to... me to ask that, didn't he? I've, I've fallen into the trap there. Yeah, you just well, gave I'd him th- everything he wanted. Thanks yeah. for that. The, the thing is, like, I'd often thought to myself that, you know, once you reach a certain age and you take an interest in gardening, that's basically a slow march to the grave. You know, like, you've just given up on life. You know, the it. day... The day a new Game Boy release can't get your heart racing because you're concerned about the pH of the soil around your recently planted dahlias, you know, you might as well just roll on, roll on retirement because it's all just, you've just given up on life. However, uh, given, uh, oh, um, let's just wheel off a couple of recent horrors. Let's get, uh, ignoring, uh, you know, coronavirus. Um, let's take into account, uh, the upcoming uh, leaving the EU uh, or the American election. All these horrors in the world, which we have to live with Mm. with, constantly. Um, I've taken great refuge in being able to go out into my garden and dig holes. Um, Some of these holes have a purpose, you know, because I'm putting something in the hole. Um, and, And I've never really cared about the dimensions of that hole. You know, is it circular? Is it oblong? Is it a bit more free form? Don't really mind. Now, I have been cutting a path into the front lawn okay. of our house. It's not an amazing I, I lawn. I missed about fifty percent of that. I reckon. Well, well, pay attention. Just, son, I was sitting. I was staying here. I was, I was sitting here. I was literally looking at you and your mouth flapping. And the connection. I just been, missed it. The connection on the internet has been flawless i cannot stress yeah. it out. oh oh <laughs> crystal clear if, any, if anything i can see you better now than i did in person <laughs> the thing is there's seeing and then there's knowing there's yeah. see, and, and understanding but like i the long i'm gonna, I'm gonna is... say you're the clone <laughs> oh no no oh no no he dug a perfectly square hole he must be the 10 percent better yeah yeah I'll what true, i'm saying yeah. if it was perfectly what, square what i'm saying is i've been digging uh, a path into the lawn, into the front lawn of the house. And the point is, it's meant to go from the front door across the lawn to, you know, the pavement, the bit where the normal people live. And <laughs> it has to, it has to be straight. So my escape this week, my like, our oh, work's getting a bit much, I need to step outside and kind of like relax, has been to go outside with an edging tool and a shovel, and to dig uh, a perfectly dead straight trench across the lawn, but in segments because I've had to get back to work. So I would go down and I'd like mark it out and I'd cut a line in the lawn and then I'd cut like at 90 degrees and I'd cut like a little chunk out. And it's so satisfying. I cannot even begin to describe how wonderful it is to like you you mark out a little square, you you punch you punch the hole out, you know, you dig it up, and I would go back up to the office to get back to work. With the with the myself, soil. You'd be with, I reckon with the soil. You're just staring at the square, aren't you, for about an hour. I am staring at the square for quite yeah. a while. Like, I don't know what it says about my brain, but looking down at the lawn and seeing a perfectly square or, you know, kind of rectangular hole in the lawn. Oh, well, hang on, hang on. <laughs> well, you, said it, you, said it, you said it was perfectly square five minutes ago. Well, I'm talking in like a broad kind of like Monty oh, Don kind of sense. So you what, know, are you, like, what are you putting in a paving slab into this hole? There is a paving slab sitting in each hole nice. and it will be surrounded by gravel. That's the plan. Ooh, lovely. I'm just saying there's something very pleasingly geometric about it which is what I enjoy 
and, and and clearly this is the way my brain works it's 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 a perfect metaphor for creating order from chaos i'm going out there and i'm spitting on gog's creation by cutting a perfectly straight line down the middle of my garden and then like taking it out in chunks it's so, oh cannot tell you how mm. but you only you only recently had it relayed didn't you uh no the front garden front gardening's a Oh, the, sorry, the front garden. Yeah, front garden is a, a, just a blasted wilderness, you know. Just, uh, yeah. Oh, okay. I, I thought you were talking about the back garden, which which is very nice at the moment, or was. Thank you, thank you. It's very kind. I think, I, I, basically, I think it just appeals to my slightly obsessive, compulsive nature where I'm like, everything must be straight, everything must be clean, perfect, right angles. You know, my workspace is just this kind of Spartan empty space it's, it's like, like it's like so an, yeah it's like an altar like a yeah truly clean rectangle with just a screen on it and that's it i don't think there's even a keyboard there i don't even know how you type no well it's and nick is surrounded by like game boys and game childs and wonder swans at all times whereas Indeed. like mine is just this empty space where it's just me my thoughts and the barren truth of existence you know <laughs> and how's that working out <laughs> I was fine. <laughs> Bought a new lamp the other day and ended up buying this thing which just looks like the obelisk from 2001 just sitting at the side of the table. So, nice. yeah, it's just the way my brain so works. So you just apparently. you just like square like v vertices, don't you? You like... You I like do, a, yeah. Yeah, you like you want your world to be like Minecraft. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, I do. That and wasn't sure... intended as a compliment. <laughs> well, I have a, I have a question. Yeah. Oh, hello. Yes, you in the front. Yeah. What is Minecraft? There we go. And and we've gone full circle. The podcast has No, gone... I do I do I do actually know what Minecraft is, but I only know what Minecraft is because I've watched John play it. There you go. That's what oh. John wants the world to be like. Yeah. John mm. wants the world to be controlled to the point that he can divide it into equal sized cubes. Well, you I think you're hitting on it, Nick, cuz I can't control any practically and en practically anything but i can go out and ruin a perfectly good lawn by cutting a perfectly square hole in it yeah and and frankly that's that's enough that's the that's the promethean dream of humanity is to see a pristine untouched wilderness and to go cut a perfectly square hole in it well i mean is there anything more powerful for us to end our podcast on? I can't think of anything more profound that I can't think of anything more profound that I can say at this precise moment in time. More profound or profane, either way, John. Whatever, John undeniably has cut a square hole in his front lawn, and for good or for bad, it will remain and, as a and, testament to his OCD. Yeah. <laughs> and, and and in this conversation, apparently, just you may have cut a square hole into it. into the podcast as well. I think forever this podcast will be known as the Square Hole. Well, with that in mind, gentlemen, what do we think won this evening? Mm. Is it hate mm. or is it love? Mm. Well, the thing is... I mean, I really, I really don't like watching movies that are different to what I thought they were going to be. No. No. Um, so there's, there's a reason. But I really do like infographics as well as liking Game Boys. And so I feel like for me, mm. the loves were very much like about stuff that I like. And when it comes to me, that's more important than you. So, oh. for me, oh, I, I would say love one. That's my. Oh my god! My do, I, do I get to be? Do I get to be the the time? It sounds like you're the dis the deciderator, John. Well, maybe just because it's fresh on my mind, and I could just look out of a window now oh. and see it, but you can't. I it's dark. Cannot. I cannot stress the sheer joy of cutting a square <laughs> hole in a lawn. So I'm going to go with love. So it all came down to the square hole. I can't believe that that's what's decided. Yeah. The square hole. So it's come to this. It's come to <laughs> this. Despite yeah. everything and, and how Chris and I may have felt about the square hole, it did just decide the result of this episode of the podcast. <laughs> rendering, rendering the previous hour and a half completely pointless. <laughs> we should have just talked about square holes the whole time. Yeah. We're also like 72 episodes in. I think, you know, come on. If there was a point to this, we would have worked it out. By so what now. you're saying... Oh, okay. I feel we've done we've done quite well to maintain relatively original content for this long. <laughs> for this long, but I guess that we've jumped the shark, we've jumped the hole. Yeah, uh, I, I thought what you were saying, John, is that like we all we all get one square hole, right? And this was this was John's square hole. It was about a square hole. Um, he's got he's got yeah. to do better next time. <laughs>
We, Are we going to make that a, like a terminology I think now? so. This is going to be my square hole. So you hole, might, you might yeah. introduce a hate or a love knowing that it's probably going to be your square hole. And that's okay because you get one. You know, you can joke, but you just sound like two men who have a square hole Thank in you. their lives that desperately <laughs> oh. needs filling. <laughs> and frankly... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put a round peg in it. That's what I'll I'm show doing. you. Well, well it, if you dig that square hole 2% bigger on every dimension, you can bury the body of the imposter who you have to kill in order to reclaim your life.